In this presentation, we're going to see how open automation software can be used to be a producer and a consumer of Kafka data and transfer that data to Industry 4.0 data sources like Allen Bradley, Siemens, Modbus, OPC UA, MQTT, and any data source that OES uh, provides. To follow along, go visit the website openautomationsoftware.com and select Support Knowledge Base in the upper right. And then under Data Destinations, we're going to follow along with a guide under the Kafka section called Getting Started Kafka Producer. Kafka can also be a consumer, and we'll see that in this video. That can be found under Data Sources Kafka. Now, with OAS, we can interface to either cloud systems or local systems with Kafka. I'm going to use a local broker for the best performance. So the first thing I'll do is I'll use a command prompt to start up the zookeeper of Kafka. Next, I'm going to start up the broker service. And now we're ready to use the Kafka broker. I have the OES default installation with the demo tags already installed. And I've activated my demo license. And now I'm ready to produce the data to Kafka. So I'll go to configure drivers. I'll log in with the admin user that I created. And I'll give it a driver name of anything that I'd like. Right now, I'll just use Kafka as the driver interface name. And I'll select the driver type as Kafka. And when I do that, I'm now able to set what the bootstrap server uh, or servers that I can use to send the data to. If you're going to send to a cloud system, select the correct security profile. And using Confluent, you would enter in the API key into the username that is provided and the secret key as the password. I'm going to use just the default of a local broker service. And we've made all of the adjustable parameters for the Kafka interface available for you. But if you're new to Kafka, just use the defaults. One of the performance things that you'll find is the acknowledgement can either be all partitions, just the leader, or none. None is the best performance when you're actually trying to just publish data to a Kafka interface. So in this, I'm going to be transferring 100,000 values later in this video. So I'll show you this. Uh, we'll use none as the best performance. And now we're able to select published selected tags. So we'll, when we enable this, we can now specify a list of tags coming, coming from either local or remote services. I'm going to browse my local service and set the ID as just ramp. But the tag can be any of the variables uh, of a particular tag that you want to publish data from. And so I'll select a few more tags, ramp, random, and sign. If you would like to set up multiple tags, you can use either the CSV export and import buttons right here. Or you can programmatically set up these properties using the OES config assembly, using the driver parameters, or you can use the REST API. Both are free for you to use to programmatically set up OES tags and drivers. Before we add this driver, I want to go over a few more things. The publish type can be either continuous based upon event or at a specific time of day. If it's select to event, you can browse for an integer tag or a Boolean tag that will transition from false to true, true to false, or both. For now, I'll just use the continuous type, and I'll set the publish interval to just be once per second. I can choose to publish just the latest value, which is the default, or if I uncheck this property, what I'll then be doing is I'll publish every single value change since the last time that the publish occurred to Kafka. I can also optionally include to include all of the tags or just the values that have changed. 
This is the optimal configuration to use if you want to send every single value change to Kafka that it will optimize the message size to only be included the latest value changes. The first time that it publishes to Kafka, we will automatically create the topic if it doesn't exist. You'll find that property further up under the selection called Automatically Create Topics. And with this enabled, if the topic doesn't exist, it'll automatically be created with the replication factor and number of partitions that you specify here. Minus one will make it the defaults of what Kafka interface will use. Under the publish topic ID is where we specify what is the topic name that we're going to publish to. And then for each individual tag value, what is the tag ID, value name, optionally the quality and timestamp. And then the timestamp type can be of these types. It can be even a custom type or you can use Unix time. If we now select add driver, we are now publishing to the Kafka interface. Let's use a command prompt to monitor that topic. So there we see that the Kafka topic called OAS underscore tags now has these messages being pumped into it from OAS. And we can see that it includes the tag name, quality, and timestamp. Just to show you that if we uncheck these include quality and timestamp, we can see that the message format does change to not include those. Let's go back to include that. Very good. So now we can see how OES can be used to publish to Kafka. Uh, to show you a little bit more about the properties of include latest value, let's go back to configure tags. And let's change the simulation rate on the sign signal to just be every 10 seconds. And then what we'll see is just ramp and random now are included every publish, but then we see that the sign is not included one uh, except for one of every 10 messages that are being sent. So that hopefully gives you an idea of how the property of publish latest value only occurs. So even if I change the publish interval to say once every 10 seconds, let's do that. Now every 10 seconds, we're going to be publishing the value changes that have occurred for each individual tag. That'll be 10 for ramp, 10 for random, and one for sign. So let's select stop runtime just so we can take a look at inspect this one particular topic. So you can see we have the one message that has sign just listed once and then it has random and ramp listed 10 times within that individual packet. Let's go back to start runtime again and let's change that publish interval back to the once per second. Now, OAS can also be a consumer. Let's go look at uh, set up a tag in OAS to be a data source from Kafka. So we'll just go to add a tag either to an existing group or to the root. We'll change the, da the data type to string or JSON and the data source that we can make that uh, Kafka. And there we'll enter in the topic name. I'm going to use the topic OES underscore tags that I'm already writing to and just monitor that particular topic. And there we can see we have good data quality. And so if we select add to watch 
and expand this, we can see we can see the ramp and random values. And there's the sign that popped in for just that one message. And then it's back to these current messages. So that's how OES can be used to be both a producer and a consumer. Anytime you ch make changes to your driver interface or your tags, you will want to save those changes to a file. And I can just call this Kafka. And then it, when you save it to a file, it's going to prompt you, do you want to set that as the default on the startup? So when you select yes, that puts under configure options the default file that you would start when the OES engine starts up. A few other things. One other thing that you might find helpful for troubleshooting your interface to Kafka is under configure options, you can go to system logging and can, you can enable the property log Kafka communications. With that property checked, it's going to generate a text file onto your system into the directory that you have specified under transaction log path. Now, I'm going to do a performance test with OAS to now generate 100,000 tags per topic. To do that, I'm going to uncheck the log Kafka communications because that is going to chew up a lot of disk space in a hurry. Uh, you will find out. So let's go to tags and the first thing I need to do is set up a hundred thousand tags. So I'm going to stop runtime for the best performance for my CSV import and I'm going to load, uh, I'm going to import 100,000 tags and that's going to create it under a group called SIM. And under SIM, I have 100,000 tags. And if we look at the data source of those tags, it's simply set to a ramp simulation once per second. So we have 100,000 tags, each changing every second. The next thing I'll do under the drivers is I'll go down to my publish section. And I'll delete the existing list of tags and then I'll add and then I'll use CSV import. I already have a list of 100,000 tags set up here. Uh, first, let's just do 5,000 5, tags so you can kind of see that uh, in action. So I'll select apply changes. We'll start runtime. And then in our interface that we see to the right, we see every second um, we'll have five separate messages because we have this property called max tags per publish. So what it's doing is it's taking the 5,000 values and it's breaking them up into five separate messages. And that is kind of the uh, nice feature to adjust for best performance when you're sending more than a thousand tags that Kafka does seem to work best on smaller message sizes but for the best performance we found that about a thousand tags per publish is the best uh, rate that you can publish at. Now let's push it on a bit further to go to 100,000 tags so I'll use the CSV import and now at this rate, and we'll select apply changes to make that active. And then at this rate, what we're doing is we are sending 100 messages per second, each with 1,000 tags per message. Now we can see this interface itself does not keep up with the uh, performance of what Kafka can do because it's basically trying to consume that topic and we're actually writing the values faster than what the console can actually keep up with. But to check it out, you can either use the transaction logging that I showed you earlier, or we can use a command to monitor um, how many messages that Kafka is using. So what I'll do is I'll run another uh, command
show us how many messages uh, that is currently in a particular topic. And there we see we have 2,399 messages. Now, if I run that command uh, once again, a few seconds later, we now see we have 4,739 messages in that particular topic. So you can see the messages themselves are actually getting pushed into Kafka. Uh, and you can consume them with any of the tools that Kafka supports. You'll find some very good information on a website by Confluent on either all kinds of different interfaces uh, to interface with a Kafka broker. If you have other questions about open automation software, Kafka interface, or any of the data sources or destinations that open automation software can interface with, you can send us an email to support at oasit.com, or you can contact us under our contact us page.